Are you about to start your first year of classroom teaching and you're feeling a bit overwhelmed? Are you worried about classroom management, lesson planning, or connecting with your students? Well, trust me, you're not alone. In today's episode, we're gonna give you three essential strategies that will help you not only survive, but thrive in your first year. So make sure you stick around to the end because we're gonna give you some actionable tips that you can start implementing today. Grab a pen, a piece of paper, and get ready to take some notes because we're gonna start right now. Hey everybody, Gordon Emerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we help leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further faster in your educational journey. If this is, in fact, your first time with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any of our coolest updates or any of our latest episodes. So welcome in everybody. So let's just start with something that's really, really important. For all of you that are our first year, first time classroom teachers, I wanna invite you to just take a deep breath and sit back and just relax for just a moment. I want you to take a moment to recognize that you have now joined this exclusive profession where you are going to literally enrich, improve, and enhance the lives of hundreds and thousands of students over the course of your career. And people like, like me, principals, superintendents, hiring directors, we chose you and we chose you for your gifts, for your talents, for your expertise, and for your passion to help young people be better. And so what we wanna do is we wanna equip you. We wanna equip you with some, some key things to think about as a new teacher because you can feel a bit overwhelmed. You can wonder, are you gonna be able to do all the stuff and make sure you can fulfill all the commitments that come along with the responsibility the huge responsibility of supporting students, executing on the school site principal's vision, helping to build the school community, all those things will be at play. But what we're gonna focus on are those core essentials. Because when you do those core essentials really, really well, then it will blossom for other things for you to be able to enhance and increase and do so much more within your classroom. So that's what today's episode is all about. So we're gonna give you three strategies and then you're gonna have actionable tips you're gonna be able to implement and put into play right away. So let's jump right in with strategy number one. So strategy number one is going to be foundational for your success as a classroom educator. And everything is all about having solid classroom management. So from the very, very beginning, your classroom management system is all about creating a positive learning environment in an environment where all of your students will be able to be successful because there is a clear set of expectations. An important strategy is to build a sense of ownership. So collectively and collaboratively, designing what those expectations are with your students is powerful to create that sense of ownership, to create that sense of buy-in, and then making sure that you consistently reinforce on a daily basis, on a per period basis, making sure that you're consistent in the application of what those expectations and what those rules and procedures are. Our students thrive when they know what is expected of them, behaviorally, academically, socially. So be clear with that and involve them, give them a space in that room to play a part in how they will govern themselves and how you will govern and hold them accountable as well. And then making sure that you make it clearly visible and evident, post it on your walls, put it as a part of your online platforms if you're using Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams, making sure that you send it home, make sure that parents know what those expectations are, share with your parents that these are the rules and the expectations that we have created as a classroom community so that way your parents can be partners and they can also help to reinforce that as well. But your classroom management plan, early, day one, put that in place and be very, very, very committed to making sure that you adhere to it. 
and that you hold yourself and your students accountable to it because it will create that rich, positive learning environment that all students can be successful around. So make sure you have a clear set of expectations, build that collective capacity by giving your students some ownership and then making sure that you reinforce it in a number of different ways all through the classroom environment as possible. So that way you create that rich learning environment. And that's strategy number one. All right, strategy number two is all about lesson planning and time management. Now we know that lesson planning can be a huge consumer of our time because we wanna create learning experiences that are rich and relevant and rigorous for our students. So a good strategy is to start with the end in mind and backwards map. What is the thing that I want my students to know and be able to do at the end of this five days, at the end of this four weeks, whatever that cycle of inquiry that you're going to engage in with your students, what is, that you, what is it that you want them to know and be able to do at the end? Once you've gotten really clear on what that objective is and what learning and mastery looks like at the end, now we can backwards map. Let's talk about what are the types of assessments? What are the types of performance metrics that our students will be able to demonstrate? Are we having them write? Are we having them do some sort of performance task? Are we having them do some sort of a visual representation? Are we having them engage with a certain group of people? Are they are we having them show their learning in various different ways? Those are all assessments. Assessments are not just a test. There are lots of different assessments, but the types of assessments should be driven by what is it that I want my students to know and be able to do at the end. Again, backwards mapping it. I know what I want them to do. Now I know what types of assessments I need to provide to them. Now, once I know what types of assessments, now I know what types of weekly and daily learning experiences. What are the types of things I want them to read? What are the types of things I want them to talk about? What are the types of questions I want them to grapple with? That then becomes the next piece. But we start with the end in mind and then we backwards map. And then we're much more efficient with the delivery of our instruction. We're much more efficient with the design of these instructional units because you wanna maximize your time. You wanna maximize the time that you have so when you're in the classroom, you can maximize those learning experiences. And if you have a strong instructional design strategy, backwards mapping, starting with the end in mind, you will maximize your instructional delivery as well as maximize your time to be able to provide those rich learning experiences. And that is strategy number two. All right, before we move to strategy number three, share with us in the comments below, what are your first year teaching experience expectations? Are you nervous? Are you worried? What are you nervous? What are you worried about? Share that with us in the comments below and let us as a community share with you ideas, insights, wisdom, and some hacks that will help you. We were all, myself included, we were all first year teachers at some point. So you don't have to all have it all figured out yet. There's zero expectation that you are the most expert at what you're getting ready to do, but you can become that. And leaning into this and showing that you're ready to learn, you're ready, willing, willing to ask those questions and be vulnerable, share that with us in the comments below. And we're going to support you in every way we can to provide some wisdom and some insights. All right, let's move to strategy number three. All right, let's talk about strategy number three. Building relationships with your students and your colleagues. Both of those groups are critically important for you as a first year teacher, a newer teacher. Building relationships is gonna be key to your success. So a concrete strategy right away that I wanna tell you would be to create a check-in and a check-out procedure with your students. Having that personal connection. And you can figure out what the interval needs to be, whether that's on a weekly basis, whatever the a monthly basis, a daily basis in some cases, but that check-in and that check-out, just seeing how students are doing, seeing how they're feeling, checking in on them and seeing what they need, how things are going, that establishes a deep and meaningful connection because students who know that you care about them will learn better. They'll, they'll engage more. They'll take more risk. They'll feel more safe. And that's the environment that every single one of us have got to strive to create for our students. They deserve that. But also, we want you to build a strong sense of 
connection with a mentor, a veteran teacher, a more experienced teacher, somebody who can help you navigate some of the questions and unlock some of those issues that you may not know the answers to. And so having that personal relationship with your students to make them feel safe and to grow them and develop them, also seek out that mentorship from a colleague who can help you also feel safe, feel connected, feel engaged, feel empowered to do this really, really critically important work. When we're first year teachers, we feel that we can be lost. We feel a little bit vulnerable. We feel a little bit, are we out of place? Resist that urge because there are professionals all around you. Teachers, school site leaders, your, your school site administrators, district level support folks. Tap into those resources, develop, develop those mentoring relationships. It's going to help you to thrive. There is nothing more important to me as a leader of an organization than the success and the successful fulfillment of, of a life's passion. When we become educators, we become educators because we're passionate about it, because we want to make the world a better place. And so whatever we can do to create opportunities for you to be successful, that's what we all should be striving to do and hold us to account for that. Seek out those leaders and ask them how they can support you as a new teacher, as a new educator, as a new professional. Ask those questions. You deserve that type of support. We as leaders need to be held to a, a, a higher standard to make sure we're supporting the folks that we lead. And so if you stay with us to this point in the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share it with a friend, share it with some folks. We want to continue to provide that value to you. And if you want more information about how to just thrive as an early professional, an early career professional, if you just want to get more mentorship, more information, check out this next video. It should be right here. And don't forget to check the description below for more information on coaching and mentorship and our weekly newsletter and all that information. Hopefully it supports you along the way as well. We're on our way. We're starting a new school year. We're rocking and rolling. And hopefully these resources are valuable to you. All right. So take care of each other. I want you to be well. And we'll see you on our next one. Thanks, everyone.